amigos, ¿qué tal? Eh, el día de hoy tenemos el honor de tener al doctor Nicola Antonucci eh, de Mucho Italia. Mucho gusto. <ríe> Muchas gracias. Y de acuerdo a tu experiencia, ¿cuáles son los factores que podrían traer como consecuencia problemas del neurodesarrollo en los niños? Yes, unfortunately, in the last 30 years, the number of children that are getting sick with autism are increasing year by year. At least 13% per year is increasing. Now, the official Uh, research in the USA it's one out of 58 children but in other countries even more even one out of 30 children uh, if you think that only 30 years ago it this uh, uh, rate was just one child out of 5,000 you can imagine how much is increasing and it's likely that we have some envir environmental factors that they are uh, uh, increasing this uh, rate Uh, for sure, one of these is the uh, heavy metal intoxication in the environment. And unfortunately, I think even in Peru is one of the main problems because you are, uh, your economy is based on mining, on uh, metals. Yes. Uh, even Lima is a very industrial town, so a lot of pollution are coming from mercury, lead. I, I'm finding in the test of children a lot of uh, aluminum, cadmium, thallium. Which, are, uh, which is very unusual for me in my experience in Italy, okay? I used to see only mercury, not all this other uh, heavy metal. So I think that uh, uh, this factor, the quantity of heavy metals that they are accumulating is a very important factor. But also uh, chemicals, especially pesticides. Mm -hmm. uh, if you think that uh, the most, um, uh, the highest rate of autism is not USA, but it's, uh, they are the country where they are using more quantity of pesticides, such as Korea mm -hmm. and Japan. They have one out of 30 children, they are, wow. they are sick. And we should consider also some medical practice, for example, uh, cesarean section delivery, mm -hmm. or not breastfeeding, on the using antibiotics in the first year of life are compromising a very important balance in the gut of these children, mm -hmm. which is called microbiome, which is this internal world of bacteria that are very important for the brain development because they are producing a lot of neurotransmitters, mm -hmm. uh, vitamins that we cannot produce by ourselves, modulating the immune system and protecting by intoxication, by infections. Another concern that recently is raising is uh, the exposure to electromagnetic fields as well. So as you can see, there are a lot of uh, uh, factors involved which are increasing the last year and which are compromising the development of the brain of these children. Doctor, ¿cuál es su opinión sobre el orden que deberían seguir eh, los niños cuando hacen un protocolo de biomedicina? Sabemos que todos son distintos, pero según su experiencia, ¿existe un orden o cuál es lo que usted puede sugerir al respecto? Sí, yeah, uh, it depends a lot, uh, child by child, but because the most of these children have a gastrointestinal inflammation problem, mm -hmm. I think the working on the, the gut, so the balance of this microbiome is very important. We need for the most of these children to clean the gut by parasite, mm -hmm. uh, especially chronic yeast infection, bacterial infection, even viral infection, to fix uh, constipation diarrhea, which is usually very common as a result of chronic inflammation, mm -hmm. the gut. My way of starting treatment is gluten-free, casein-free diet, uh -huh. or add other food like uh, soy, corns for some children. And then, after you fix the, the gut, you can work more on detoxification, or removing uh, toxicants, heavy metals, uh, for example. And if it's still not enough, mm -hmm. I try to work in, like ter third step directly on the brain inflammation. Brain inflammation. And there are several treatments that we can do for that. Okay. Doctor, dentro de su experiencia, ¿cuáles son los tratamientos que se sugieren o que han tenido efectividad en el control de ansiedad y en el control de la um, estrés, del estrés? Yeah, many children have problems with anxiety, agitation, hyperactivity and aggressivity. Mm -hmm. Most of these children became aggressive because they are very anxious. So aggressivity is a way to, to respond to the anxiety uh, and there are several ways to treat anxiety and uh, 
also aggressivity and agitation. One of these for sure is uh, working on the gut inflammation because a lot of this anxiety is coming from uh, uh, the toxin produced by bacteria and by yeast. So addressing bacteria and yeast, you can already remove anxiety. But when it's not enough, you can use some natural treatment for anxiety. One of the most effective is called 5-HTP, which is 5-hydroxytryptophan, because tryptophan is precursor of serotonin. Mm -hmm. So in some way, giving this simple supplements where increasing the level of serotonin in the brain, which is uh, another important supplement can be theanine, because yeah. theanine is reducing the activation of uh, is working on GABA receptor and reducing anxiety. Apart from working on serotonin, we have other receptors that we can uh, address, like uh, GABA receptor mm -hmm. and uh, glutamate. We have to increase the stimulation of GABA because it's inhibitory and calm down children. And one uh, uh, norm, uh, very simple way is using theanine, which is a simple supplement mm -hmm. which uh, inhibit the GABA or even the, uh, the GABA as amino acid, GABA aminobutyric amino acid is very effective for this kind of children mm -hmm. on anxiety and agitation. And another one is also taurine. Taurine is a simple amino acid mm -hmm. which increases glutathione, so have anti-oxidant uh, effect and uh, stimulate the GABA receptor and uh, counterbalance the glutamate, which is a uh, uh, stimulator of the anxiety and agitation. Okay. What is the difference between GABA and picamilon? Picamilon is a combination of GABA with NADH, which is a, a factor that uh, is involved in the uh, production of energy in the mitochondria. So it's very interesting combination because they can uh, pass the blood-brain barrier better together mm -hmm. and have a double effect. From one side, inhibitory effect, from other side, producing more energy in the brain. Mm -hmm. So it can be very interesting and useful in children that from one side have a hyperactivity, the other side they have a lack of attention, deficit. So classical children with ADHD can be a very good target for these uh, uh, interesting, simple supplements. Mm -hmm. Doctor, ¿cuál es el tratamiento que se sugiere actualmente eh, para los niños que presentan el síndrome de pandas? Pandas is a, a very complicated autoimmune disorder in these mm -hmm. children. Pandas is for neuropsychiatric disorders linked to streptococcus infection. But we have also another way to say pandas is called also PNAS, where we are not talking about streptococcus, but maybe other bacteria. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's an autoimmune disorder where the body fights against itself, especially in the brain. Mm -hmm but is triggered by uh, bacterial infection, okay? Usually streptococcus, but can be other bacterial infection. Staphylococcus, chlamydia, mycoplasma, even Borrelia, different bacteria can activate this uh, autoimmune disorder. If we are lucky, a treatment with antibiotics in some of the children can be already effective. The cl classical symptoms of uh, pandas, it's uh, anxiety, especially separation anxiety. It's ticks mm -hmm. and also loss of uh, cognitive skills, motor skills, learning, mm -hmm. okay? For some of these children working on, uh, on uh, antibiotics, I mean, so fighting the bacteria that were triggering this autoimmune disorder is already good. Mm -hmm. And usually it's a long-term treatment with antibiotics. Mm -hmm. But when it's not enough, another uh, more invasive uh, but effective treatment, it's called uh, IVIG intravenous immunoglobulin, which are, it's a very classical way to treat autoimmune disorders. Doctor, sabemos que eh, polimorfismo de un solo nucleótido como el MTFRH eh, se está vinculando con el autismo. Eh, ¿Existe realmente esta vinculación y cuál es la sugerencia para tratarlo? Uh, this uh, um, specific genes is important in a metabolic pathway which is called uh, methylation, where Amino acid like uh, homocysteine is converted in S adenosyl methionine, which is an activated form of methionine, which is important to produce energy in the brain. 80% of methionine is converted in creatine phosphate, which is a, a carrier of energy in the brain. But also important to produce uh, neurotransmitters, also important to activate detoxification. 
So that's why it's crucial these children and studies are uh, uh, showing a strict connection between autism and the problem in oxidative stress, in detoxification and also in this uh, metabolic pathway. So uh, because this enzyme, when it's not working well, when it's uh, uh, abnormal, especially in homozygosis form, mm -hmm. we have a problem in all these uh, aspects, we can simply use some activated form of uh, uh, folate of uh, B12 to pass this, uh, go over this uh, uh, abnormal step and uh, activate again this methylation pathway. So fortunately there are simple uh, supplements and vitamins activated that you can use. One is methylfolate mm -hmm. and the other one is methylcobalamin. Mm -hmm. okay? ¿Cuál sería la sugerencia para padres que deciden ir por el camino de la biomedicina y en qué casos específicos se sugiere eh, medicina farmacológica? The treatment of biomedica is successful when uh, I remove psychotic medicine. So even if I am a psychiatrist for uh, adult people and I know how to use uh, psychotic uh, medicine, I try to not use with children because they have a lot of side effects. The only reason to use this medicine when you have very aggressive mm -hmm. children that you cannot handle in other way. Mm -hmm. But there are more easy treatment, supplements and the uh, anti-inflammatory treatment that can help these children. Um, you, because aggressivity, as I was mentioning before, can be a sign of infections, chronic infection, can be a sign of pain. Mm -hmm. Usually these children have uh, abdominal pain mm -hmm and the doctor don't understand because these children cannot communicate so they don't understand this they have pain and they give a antipsychotic it's just to put them to sleep okay instead of treating in, in, in infection or inflammation mm -hmm. sometimes we have uh, anxiety which is uh, which is uh, causing aggression as already mentioned and so the treatment for anxiety can be natural treatment for anxiety it could be good to avoid psychotic medicine but when it's really necessary, instead of working with antipsychotic medicine, which are working on dopamine, and the dopamine, when you do something, you do something from dopamine, you, you can have a lot of side effects. For example, you are um, reducing the balance between dopamine and the choline, and you are uh, having uh, extra pyramidal symptoms are called, which they became more rigid, like Parkinson's disease. Okay. Mm -hmm or you can affect the metabolism of, uh, uh, of they became more obese, they want to eat more, they accumulate more uh, fluids, okay. Other way to treat these children instead of working dopamine is another receptor like adrenergic and noradrenergic receptor which are receptor for anxiety or for uh, are more receptor for people that are suffering of uh, a pressure and uh, tachycardia, okay? And this uh, medicine is uh, like proparolon, which is very good to reduce anxiety and to calm down children, or clonidine, which is a medicine for pressure and make children calmer, but not uh, giving particular side effects. So I usually, when I, I talk with um, uh, colleagues, I suggest them to not think about antipsychotic medicine, but to think about more this kind of, of uh, receptor, which have been used in medicine uh, for this kind of problem, but most of uh, psychiatrists, they don't know that can be very useful for these children. In the case of los niños que presentan neuroinflamación, ¿existen eh, suplementos que usted pueda recomendar para ellos específicamente? Uh, yeah, the brain inflammation for sure is the what is causing the most of the symptoms of the, these children. But neuroinflammation is not only the brain, it's coming also from the rest of the body. Mm -hmm. So when you reduce inflammation in the gut or reduce allergies, you are also working on the brain inflammation. There are specific medicines that uh, I suggest for uh, brain inflammation. One of these uh, are, uh, uh, it's a supplement that work on cannabinoid receptor. It's called PEA or palmitalinethanolamide. Mm -hmm and uh, other uh, treatment for this inflammation can be luteolin and there is a very interesting combination of uh, PEA and luteolin, it's called PEA lut, which is very specific for uh, brain inflammation. Some of colleagues are even using ibuprofen, I dose, mm -hmm. to reduce inflammation, 
that's another interesting way to treat directly med with medicine that you can find commonly used for inflammation. Another one is using a specific combination of chondroitin sulfate with vitamin D3 mm -hmm. and phospholipids which are coming down directly the microglia activation, which are these cell or inflammatory cells in the brain, mm -hmm. which produce uh, then brain damage. Dr. Antonio, finally, what is your advice for the families of children who receive these conditions? I know uh, that uh, having this, uh, even this uh, uh, diagnosis is a really terrible uh, trauma for every parent. But I want to encourage everyone to not uh, give up and to try to find the right treatment for e each children, each child. Because I know that the most of uh, neuropsychiatrists uh, will tell you there is nothing to do, just the rehabilitation. But autism is a medical problem. I have to be treated as medical disorder. And unfortunately, the research is going so fast and, uh, uh, and the, the most of neuropsychiatrists, they are not updated about the most of treatment. So when someone of these neuropsychiatrists say that there is nothing to do, uh, you should not believe it. And you should connect to a community of parents that are already doing a treatment around the world and uh, just studying and uh, sharing experience. Try to find a doctor that can treat autism as a medical disorder and try to do even very simple treatment. It usually has taking care of diet, uh, take simple probiotics, uh, give antioxidant, which are very safe, simple treatment. Mm -hmm. And you can see already good results and then you can be feel motivated, encouraged to go over and do more because it's possible to treat these children and I've seen many children completely recovered. Gracias, muchas gracias por esta entrevista. Es un placer trabajar contigo eh, por los niños. Eh, gracias por los nuevos estudios, por toda la información y los suplementos efectivos con los cuales has trabajado y que nos, has, nos estás abriendo más oportunidades. Eh, muchísimas gracias por tu aprendizaje, por tu conocimiento y que abre las puertas a más personas de aquí de Latinoamérica y del mundo entero.